गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन आई डॉक्टर अवनीश श्रीवास्तव विल बी प्रेजेंटिंग माई स्टडी टूडे ऑन दी एफिकेसी ऑफ द ओरल हाइपोग्लाइसिमिक ड्रग इंसुलिन मेटफॉर्मिन वर्सेज द सब क्यूटेनियस इंसुलिन थेरेपी इन द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ जिस्टेशनल डायबिटीज मेलाइटिस टूडे वील बी टॉकिंग अबाउट जी डी एम विच इज़ वन ऑफ द मोस्ट कॉमनली अकरिंग मेडिकल डिसऑर्डर्स ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी एंड वी आर सींग अ कंटिन्यूस राइज इन इट्स प्रेवलेंस एंड इंसिडेंस about 14% in the country owing to maternal obesity advancing maternal age and current lifestyle factors uh coming to insulin therapy versus metformin the constant battle that goes on in this study we have focused only on two points first whether uh, to evaluate if metformin could achieve the same amount of glycemic control as insulin therapy and the second was to evaluate and compare the obstetrical and perinatal results with a good safety profile in women with gestational diabetes mellitus that is not properly controlled with lifestyle changes this study was conducted on a total of 108 patients at shri aurobindo medical college indore which is a tertiary care center uh, the patients who were put on metformin were 52 and the those put on insulin therapy were 56 and the method of testing for the presence of gdm was a 2 hour 75 gram glucose ogtt done at the hospital where we correlate the fasting blood glucose and postprandial blood glucose levels occasionally with hba1c interventions if we suspect uh, over diabetes mellitus when we statistically analyze these results and if i put it two words easily Uh, the mean fasting blood glucose levels did not differ between the two groups however there was a significant difference in the postprandial blood glucose levels in the metformin treated group the postprandial glycemic control was much better hypoglycemic episodes were significantly more common in the insulin treated group which we all know is a common complication on patients who have been put on insulin therapy women treated with metformin gained less weight from the enrollment to the pre partum visit that is the pre delivery visit when we track the patients uh, other complications associated with the fetus such as the mean birth weight macrosomia and large for gestational age babies post delivery were not different between the two groups also the risk of uh, intra partum complications such as the risk of preeclampsia the chances of preterm delivery intra uterine death and higher chances of operative delivery were identical between the two groups if i put it in the tabular form for you to see you can see that most of the parameters fall identical between the insulin versus metformin group however we can see a significant difference in the weight gain and bmi of the pregnant mothers where there is a much lesser weight gain and bmi associated when put on treatment with metformin the one important disadvantage associated with metformin that we uh, correlated with this study was that uh, the risk of preterm delivery was significantly higher in patients who were put on metformin this can be attributed to the fact that the uh, when patients are put on metformin therapy when this therapy is continued to over a period of 9 months continuously these chances are higher and the long term study is to evaluate the effect of metformin on preterm deliveries is still undergoing with a long term studies uh, when an appropriate diet alone or associated with physical exercise is usually not able to control gdm we put the patient on the gold standard insulin therapy however that is associated with a number of disadvantages which means that the patient has to take repeated uh, injections Uh, the, we have to titrate the dose according to the patient levels repeatedly change it there is poor patient compliance and again as we have discussed the risk of postprandial hypoglycemic episodes however when we put metformin in the candidate list for uh, treatment of gestational diabetes mellitus we get a number of advantages first that there is a better patient compliance secondly that it is an oral therapy so we do not have to titrate the dose we give it as fixed dose uh, therapy for management of gdm Sec uh, another thing that we see that we have seen in this study is the maternal weight gain how that helps us in long term treatment is that it prevents the postpartum maternal morbidity the postpartum chances of developing over diabetes mellitus the chances of developing preeclampsia induced hypertension significantly reduce with when we put the patient on metformin therapy another thing that we saw with the study that was correlated with the evans et al study was that there is a low morbidity of pregnancy induced hypertension in these patients this can be associated with a complex free radical mechanism that metformin influences but the studies uh, associated with this are still under course uh, coming to the limitations of this particular study was that my study was conducted over a short period of time over a period of 6 months 
In this, we could evaluate only the obstetrical and perinatal outcomes in patients who came for delivery. However, the long-term results of using metformin are yet to be evaluated, as I have mentioned. We have also undergoing studies on whether metformin can be used up to a gestational period of nine months completely for the management of GDM. In conclusion, uh, metformin can be used in patients with GDM, but is particularly useful for patients who have mild degree of gestational diabetes mellitus, not overt. In some cases, we can also put the patient on insulin plus uh, metformin therapy, but we have not evaluated this that in this particular study. Oral hypoglycemic agents hold a probable and hopeful future in the management of GDM because of owing to better patient compliance, improved insulin sensitivity that these drugs have a property of, no significant patient risk, better affordability, lesser patient monitoring, and lesser postpartum morbidity. These were my references. Thank you. Questions?